Welcome to Contact. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the consolidated statement of profit or loss. And we're going to focus on when you have intra-group trading. Now, we have done our first lesson on the consolidated statement of profit or loss. Where we looked at the simple statement and we were able to complete the consolidated statement. So if you'd like to check that one out, and if it's your first time looking at the consolidated statement of profit or loss, I would highly recommend that you check it out before checking this one out, as this one is more advanced than the first lesson. You'll find it in the link in the description below. We've also done a couple of lessons on the consolidated statement of financial position. You'll find those lessons in the links in the description below, as well as one where we have the intra-group trading. Consolidated financial statements are the financial statements of a group presented as those of a single economic entity. And this is IFRS 10. So what we are doing is that we are taking all the entities within that group and we are preparing one statement as if it's a single economic entity. Now in this one, as mentioned, we're going to be looking at intra-group trading. If intra-group trading transactions are undertaken at cost, there would be no issue in dealing with profits due to intra-group trading. However, with each company in a group being a separate trading entity, other group companies are treated in the same way as any other outside customer. And you'll understand this much better as we go into this one here and as we even look at the complete question where we go line by line in explaining how you deal with intra-group trading when doing the consolidated statement of profit or loss. But this statement here that I just read, what is it saying here? Well, remember, sometimes we have intra-group trading within companies in the group. Let's say you have five companies or you've got a parent company and you've got five subsidiaries. So all those companies form part of the group. Now, if they are trading with one another, what this statement is saying is if they were trading with one another at cost where they do not add any markup on their products, then we would not have any issues when dealing with intergroup trading. It would be straightforward. However, each company in the group is a separate entity and it's trading with everyone else, even those within the group, as if they are outside customers, as if they are like anyone else. And that is where you have issues with intergroup trading. And you'll understand it much better as we go into it, as I just mentioned. In the consolidated statement of profit or loss, the only profits recognized should be those earned by the group in providing goods or services to outsiders. Inventory should also be valued at cost to the group. And that's very important to understand and to bear in mind when you are dealing with intergroup trading. You ask yourself, how much did you bring it in for from outside the group? That will be the cost to the group, not how much one company within the group bought from another company within the group. So when dealing with intra-group trading, here's a basic scenario. Chapel Limited, being a subsidiary, now this is an example, buys goods at one price and sells them at a higher price to Coco Limited, which is its own parent. So Chapel Limited and Coco Limited are companies within a group. And Chapel Limited, being a subsidiary, buys goods and it sells it to its own parent company which is in the same group for a higher price than which Chapel Limited bought it for. The accounts of Chapel Limited will properly include the profit earned on sales to Coco Limited. Okay, So when Chapel Limited sells to its parent company Coco Limited, it will properly include the profit that it has earned from that transaction. Now Coco Limited statement of financial position will also include inventories at their cost of purchase from Chapel Limited. Remember. If the parent company, Coco Limited, buys goods from the subsidiary, the cost of those goods or the inventory will be at which it bought them from the subsidiary. Okay. Now, here is where the problem arises with that transaction. Although Chapo Limited, being the subsidiary, makes a profit as soon as it sells goods to Coco Limited, its parent company, the group does not make a sale or achieve a profit until an outside customer buys the goods from Coco Limited, being the parent company which just bought the goods from the subsidiary. So what you're saying is, if goods are moving around within the group, okay, the group itself does not make a sale or does not achieve a profit. That is what we have to bear in mind when we're completing the financial statement, okay? Until an outside customer, a customer from outside the group, buys those goods, we don't recognize a sale or a profit. And that's when we're dealing with the group financial statements. And you'll see now, it will be much clearer as we go through the example. 
any purchases from Chapel Limited, which is the subsidiary, which remain unsold by Coco Limited, which is its parent, at year end will be included in Coco Limited's inventory. Okay, the inventory's value in the statement of financial position will be at their cost to Coco Limited, which is not the same as their cost to the group. Think about it. The parent company just bought goods from the subsidiary, and the subsidiary charged the parent for those goods, including a profit. Then the value of those goods in the parent's statement of financial position is not the same as their cost to the group because the subsidiary bought those goods at a cheaper price from outside. So what we want to do is to have inventory within the group or in the group financial statements at the price at which we brought it into the group for. I hope it's making sense, but it will make much more sense just now. Here are the steps that you have to follow when you are dealing with non-controlling interest or when you have non-controlling interest. The first thing that you have to do is that intra-group sales and purchases should be eliminated in full. That's actually an easy step to take and you'll see just now as we go into the example. Whatever intra-group sales you have and purchases should be eliminated in full. Here's what we are saying. When you are combining the amounts for the companies within the group, when you are doing the consolidated statement of profit or loss, you have to deduct the sale that was made within the group from the sales amount, from the total sales amount. And you also have to deduct the exact same amount from the purchases or the cost of sales amount. And you'll see just now when we're doing the example. So it should be eliminated in full so that we can eliminate the aspect of intra-group trading. Any unrealized profit is eliminated by adding it to the cost of sale. Now, if we still have goods within the group which was bought by one of the companies from the group, then we have to take into account unrealized profit. We have to calculate it and add it to the cost of sale. And by adding it to the cost of sale, we are reducing the group profits. And we are doing that rightly because we want to eliminate any unrealized profit that we have not realized from selling to outside customers. If the subsidiary made the sale, very important, if the subsidiary made the sale, the figure for the subsidiary's net profit used to calculate non-controlling interest must be adjusted for the unrealized profit. If the subsidiary made the sale, we have to adjust the non-controlling interest for the unrealized profit, if we have unrealized profit. And you'll see it much clearly when we're doing the calculation in the example. And the last one here is, if the parent is the one which made the sale, there will be no effect on non-controlling interest. Interest. Remember, if the parent made the sale, then it does not affect the financial statements of the subsidiary. But like we said, if the subsidiary is the one who made the sale, remember, it affects the subsidiary and the parent, obviously, which has uh, got a stake in the subsidiary. Now, let's go through an example in completing the consolidated statement of profit or loss. Like I mentioned, if you have checked out the first lesson, you'll realize the exact same example. But here we've added a scenario where we have intra-group trading. So it's a continuation from there. So if you understood the first one well, this one should be fairly easy to do. We are told here that Cocoa Limited acquired 75% of the ordinary shares of Chapel Limited. So Cocoa Limited is the parent company. Chapel Limited is the subsidiary, which it has owned since Chapel Limited's incorporation. Okay, since the subsidiary was incorporated. So we don't have any pre-acquisition issues. The summarized statements of profit or loss of the two companies for the year ending 29 February 2020 are given below. And this is where intra-group trading comes. Chapel Limited sold goods to Coco Limited. Okay, so the subsidiary here sold goods to the parent company for 8,000 rand. It had bought these goods for 6,000 rand. 40% of these goods remained in Coco Limited's inventory at 29 February 2020. So what has happened here? The subsidiary sold goods to the parent company for 8,000 rand. So that's what has been recorded as a sale by the subsidiary. And it bought these goods for 6,000 rand. So what we know is that these goods came into the group at 6,000 rand. And we are told here that 40% of these goods remained in Coco Limited's inventory, okay? So the parent bought goods from the subsidiary and the parent has sold some of those goods, which is 60%, and the remaining 40% is still in the parent company's inventory, which is Coco Limited, at the year end of 29 February 2020. 
Okay, so now we have to do the consolidated statement of profit or loss. We are given the statement of profit or loss for the two different companies. For the parent company, you can see here on the left, Coco Limited, and for Chapel Limited, which is a subsidiary, we're given here on the right, and you can see by the different color. Now, let's do that. Remember the step that I mentioned that we say that we have to eliminate the sale that the subsidiary recorded when it sold to the parent company. So we have to minus that 8,000 rand from the sales figure for the consolidated statement. And we have to deduct the exact same 8,000 rand from the cost of sale. But firstly, let's calculate how much profit the subsidiary made when it sold to the parent company. And then we'll have to determine if there is any unrealized profit. And we know that there is unrealized profit here because 40% of these goods remain in the parent company's inventory. Okay, so let's do that. Here we go. When Coco Limited made the sale, it sold the inventory for 8,000 Rand. And the cost of sales to the subsidiary or to Chapel Limited is 6,000 Rand. And that means it made a profit of 2,000 Rand. So that is the profit that the subsidiary made by selling to the parent company. But we know that 40% of these goods remain in the parent company's inventory. So we know that 40% of this profit is unrealized profit. Okay, so we have to calculate 40% of that and we know it's going to be unrealized profit. And you can see 2,000 Rand times 40% gives us 800 Rand. So we know 800 Rand is unrealized profit. In other words, the inventory in the books of the parent company have been overstated by 800 Rand for the purposes of the group. Okay, it's been overstated by 800 Rand. So what do we do? We have to eliminate it. How do we do that? We add it to the cost of sale, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So remember the unrealized profit is 800 Rand. So what do we do in the sales amount? Remember, like the previous example, we add the sale of the parent 87,000 Rand plus the sale of the subsidiary 45,000 Rand, but we deduct the 8,000 Rand, which was the sale, which was made within the group. Okay, we have to deduct it in its entirety. Okay, so it's going to be 87,000 Rand plus 45,000 Rand minus 8,000 Rand. And that will give you the total sales amount for the group. And that will be 124,000 Rand. Second thing we are doing here is the cost of sale. Remember, the cost of sale, we are adding together, obviously, the cost of sale for the parent and the subsidiary, but we are also deducting the 8,000 Rand, which is the purchases made by the parent company. And then we're also adding the 800 Rand. And here we go, it gives us 65,800 Rand. But it's very important for you to note here that by adding the 800 Rand, we are not saying that we are adding to the profits. Remember, if you are adding it to the cost of sales, meaning we are reducing our profits because the bigger the cost of sale, the less our profit. Don't be confused by that. Okay? Cost of sale is 65,800 Rand. I hope you can see how intra-group trading affects sales and cost of sales. You remove the entire intra-group sales amount from the total sales after adding for the two companies. And you remove the exact same amount from the cost of sales because this is the purchases that they parent company recorded when it bought the goods from the subsidiary and then you add any unrealized profit which we just calculated which is the profit made by the subsidiary times the amount of goods that are remaining in the parent company's books and then we continue from there so it's going to be 124,000 group sales minus the 65,800 rand group cost of sales and gives us the gross profit of 58,000 200 rand. Remember everything in red here is for the group. Okay. And then our operating expenses. Well, intra-group trading doesn't affect our operating expenses. So we're just going to add the two operating expenses, the 13,500 rand plus the 9,800 rand. And we put it as a negative. It gives us 23,300 rand. And then we have our profit before tax, which is our 58,200 minus 23,300 and gives us 34,900 rent okay and then our income tax expense remember our income tax expense we will add the income tax expense for the parent company and for the subsidiary now students usually make a mistake here where they take the income tax percentage let's say we are told that it's 28 percent and they multiply it by the 34,900 rand. that would be incorrect because the income tax expense is the one which is accounted for by each specific entity within the group. So we're just going to add the 5,460 Rand plus 
the 4,536 rand and it gives us a total of 9,996 rand. That is the total income tax expense incurred by the group. And then we just take the 34,900 rand profit before tax minus 9,996 rand income tax expense and it gives us a profit for the year of 24,904 rand. Now we've just calculated everything that we need to for the group with regard to the statement of profit or loss, but we are not done just as yet. Remember, we have to know to what is the non-controlling interest and what is what belongs to the parent company. If you checked out our first lesson, this should be fairly easy, but we just need to take into account the issue of intra-group trading. So let me enlarge the group statement of profit or loss. Here we go. This is what we've been calculating, which was in red. So I'm just enlarging it so that we can complete the last section. And here is how it would look. We have profit attributable to the owners of the parent and the non-controlling interest. So we have to calculate the two. And if you check that our first lesson, we said we will first do the non-controlling interest and the balance figure will be the one which belongs to the owners of the parent. So the first thing that we'll do is that we'll take this profit for the year 24,904 Rand and put it here right at the end. So we have 24,904, the exact same profit for the year. And now we have to divide it into what belongs to the parent and what belongs to non-controlling interest. So what is the formula for calculating non-controlling interest? How will we go about doing that? Well, here it is. It's the non-controlling interest percentage times the subsidiary's profit after tax minus unrealized profit. And that is where the intra-group trading comes in. If we didn't have any intra-group trading, it would just be the non-controlling interest percentage times the subsidiary's profit after tax, as we did in the first lesson I alluded to. But because of unrealized profit, we have to deduct it here. Okay? And remember, non-controlling interest has to take into account or has to be adjusted by unrealized profit. So what is our subsidiaries profit after tax and what is our non-controlling interest percentage well let's go back to the question as you can see here the subsidiaries profit for the year is 11,664 rand so we'll have to take note of that and we know that the parent acquired 75 percent of the ordinary shares of the subsidiary so what is the non-controlling interest percentage well it's 100 percent minus 75 percent it's 25 percent so it's going to be 25 percent multiplied by the sum of the profit for the year for the subsidiary, 11,664, minus unrealized profit. Remember, we had calculated it earlier. It's the 800 rand. And here is how it will look. 25%, which is the non-controlling interest percentage, times the 11,664 rand, which is the subsidiary's profit for the year, minus 800 rand, which is the unrealized profit. And it gives us the non-controlling interest amount of 2,000 716 rand and what about the owners of the parent what is their amount when like i said and in the previous example it's the total profit for the group minus the 2716 rand so it's basically the balancing figure and it gives us an amount of 22188 rand that is what belongs to the owners of the parent alternatively if you have to calculate it or you want to calculate it or you want to use the formula to do so here's how you will calculate the total parents profit is the parents profit according to the parents own statement of profit or loss plus the parents percentage which is the 75 percent remember it acquired 75 percent times the subsidiaries profit after tax minus unrealized profit and those are the same amounts we used for non-controlling interest subsidiaries profit after tax the 11,664 minus unrealized profit of 800 rand but this time you're using the parents percentage which is 75 percent and you're adding that the parents profit it should give you the exact same amount 22,188 rand but we usually use it as the balancing figure once you've calculated one the other one will be the balancing figure i hope it's made sense i hope you have gained value from this lesson I hope you now know how to deal with intra-group trading when you're doing your consolidated statement of profit or loss. If you have indeed gained value, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.